Hello, this is Mr. White, and I was not going to do this video originally on this topic, but uh, a few students in class today said they love my melodic voice so much they asked if I'd do a video on determining symmetry algebraically and how could I turn that down. So you should remember this from class, that we call a function what if it looks like this one on the left? Hopefully you say odd, and that function is symmetric about the origin. This one on the right here, we say that it is even, and it is symmetric about the y-axis. I have a feeling most students got that all right. The part where I may have lost some of you is this algebraic definition as to um, f, of e f of negative x right here equaling negative f of x. I'm not going to go over that in detail here. If you didn't follow that in class, please take time to come to office hours or ask uh, somebody who knows, uh, because that is the basis for this lesson here, and I want you to know where that formula came from. Uh, the one for even here on the right, f of negative x equals f of x. And again, I repeat, I want you to understand why those formulas are what they are rather than simply memorizing them. I think that actually makes your job easier. So we're going to put those algebraic definitions to use here on these three examples. And I'm going to try to go quickly. Uh, please pause as often as you need to to fully comprehend and, and follow along. So let's start with this first one, A. Now your book says solve graphically and confirm algebraically. I'm going to say there's no reason we can't do it in the other order. And for the purpose of this video, I think um, I would rather do it in the other order. But ultimately, as long as you're doing it both ways, I don't really care what order you choose to do it in when you're doing this um, for your assignment or for a test. So again, we're going to solve it algebraically, and then we're going to confirm graphically. All right, so let's bring up that algebraic definition again. Notice that for this algebraic definition that in both cases, when you're checking for it to be either odd or even, in both cases, we're asking how does f of negative x compare with f of x? Is it the opposite of f of x, or is it the same as f of x? That's the question we're asking, or is it neither? So let me just uh, shrink that down so that it's still on screen here. Move it off to the side a little bit. And again, we are interested in what's going on with f of negative x. So what I'm about to do here, I really need you to pay close attention and ask for clarification if you're not getting it, because we're going to be doing something similar when we get to later topics, such as inverse functions or composite functions. So please uh, um, ask for clarification if you're not getting this. Uh, what I want you to do is think of this function f of x as f of blank. And you're going to hear me saying that in class quite often. If I say f of x equals x squared minus 3, I would say that f of blank equals blank squared minus 3. And notice that I'm writing the blank in parentheses there. That's an important aspect of doing this. And the idea is that if you remember the idea of a variable when it was first introduced to you way back in whatever grade that was, the idea is that this variable x can stand for anything. So that's why I took it out of the equation. And I can now replace it with, say, 5. f of 5 equals 5 squared minus 3. Or I can say f of 113 equals 113 squared minus 3. It works for anything. And in this case, I'm not even going to plug in a number. I'm going to plug in the expression negative x. It even works for that. So as long as I put a negative, if I put a negative x on the left side, I, as long as I put it here, Wherever else there's a blank, I'm good. So this is what f of negative x equals. And now I ask you to simplify this expression on the right-hand side. And negative x in parentheses, again, the parentheses were very important to this, um, would be parentheses negative x times parentheses negative x minus 3. And you would look at that and hopefully say, you know what, those negative signs cancel and give me just x squared minus 3. And again, that's what f of negative x equals, now that I've simplified it. And let me ask you to compare. How does f of negative x compare with f of x? Well, they're exactly the same thing, aren't they? 
So we can now say f of negative x is exactly the same thing as f of x, and therefore the graph is even. I'm looking at this definition up here. So this is the algebraic proof or determination that that graph is even. Uh, I'm going to trust that you could type that equation into your calculator, that you could type this original function equation into your calculator and determine um, graphically that, yes, we've confirmed our answer. Look at that. It is symmetric about the y-axis. We've confirmed that it is even graphically. Okay, so let's try the same thing for example B here. Example B, we're going to do exactly the same process. So remember how we did that? I'd invite you to pause and, and see if you can try it on your own rather than just watch me do it if you feel you're ready. If you're not, watch B and then see if you can do part C on your own. Um, I do not have a, a try now at the end of this video, by the way. So again, uh, I encourage you to try either part B or C or both if you feel you're able. But if you need a reminder, here's how we did it. Remember, we say G of blank, and again, when I prompt you in class for this, I would expect you to say that's blank squared in parentheses, minus two times blank. I've got X appearing two places, so I'll replace everywhere where I see an X with a blank inside of parentheses, minus two. And again, for even odd functions, checking for symmetry, I will compare, or I want to see what's going on with the function when you plug in negative x. So it's here and here. Again, if I simplify just like last time, if you have a negative x in parentheses squared, that will give us the same thing as just x squared. Um, in this next uh, term, the two negative signs cancel, and I get positive 2x minus 2. That's what g of negative x equals. So compare g of negative x with g of x. Are they the same thing? No, they're not. Therefore, this graph is not even. Now, remember the definition for odd functions? That's where g of negative x is the opposite of g of x. Let's now check to see if this is odd. Negative g of x which would need to match this uh, expression here in red in order for the um, graph for the function to be odd, equals this. Now I'm going to look up here. I'm going to look up here, and if I'm um, make, looking for negative g of x, I need to reverse the sign of all three of those terms. So negative g of x, in fact, let me do this just for extra clarity. I want to make sure nobody gets confused on this. I'm going to start by just writing g of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 2. But what I wanted to do for extra clarity is say that if I put a negative sign out here, I need to take the negative of all of these terms. So that's why I put all of those in parentheses. And now when I distribute those, that negative sign, I get g negative g of x equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 2. OK? Now compare negative g of x with g of negative x, and are they the same thing? Well, no, they're not. So we see that from our algebraic definition, oops, from our algebraic de definition, this is neither even nor odd. Uh, if I were to go to my graph and calculator and graph it, it looks like this. And you do see some symmetry there, right? You do see that that graph is symmetric about this line, but that is not the origin and that is not the y-axis. So while it has some kind of symmetry, you will not call it even or odd, you'll just say it's neither. And I do not ask that, you, I, I do not require that you um, describe its symmetry any other way. All right, last one. Again, if you just watch the first two, hopefully you're getting the hang of it. I invite you to pause this and try this last one on your own since I don't have any trial exercises at the end of the video. Um, obviously, you'll get more practice when you're doing um, the, the assignment. But let's go ahead and do this last one algebraically. Um, this is an interesting one because you notice that there's an odd exponent and an even exponent, but hopefully you understand by now that 
you, you have to be careful about drawing conclusions based on just looking at, at, at those exponents. So let's do it the right way. H of blank equals blank cubed over 4 minus blank squared. And one more time, negative x, negative x, negative x. Again, you must ask for clarification if this isn't making sense because we are going to be doing similar things in, in later topics. Uh, on the top, if I took negative x and multiplied it by itself three times, negative x times negative x times negative x, the negatives would still leave us a, a, a negative in the end. Two of them would cancel. The third would still be there. And I would get negative x cubed up top over 4 minus positive x squared. Keeping track of all those negatives can be tricky business. Once again, I ask this question. Is h of negative x equal to h of x? If it, um, check your algebraic definition for even and odd. No, they're not the same. Therefore, this is not even. Let's go ahead and say, how does this compare with negative h of x, right? I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. Um, I'm just going to start by writing h of x. Here's the part where I ask you to be careful. I've seen students do, do this uh, uh, silly mistake here. I've seen students say, oh, if I put a negative sign over here, then I'll make the numerator and the denominator negative. And that would be incorrect. Even if you put it in parentheses in the denominator, it's still incorrect. You don't want to do that. Um, what you want to do instead is, let me see if I can fix this. put a single negative sign out here for that single fraction. And you have the choice. You can either distribute that single negative sign to the top, to the bottom, in which case you'd have to distribute it to both terms on the bottom, or you can just leave it out front. Um, that's fine too. In this case, for comparison's sake, I'm going to distribute it, or I'm going to move it to the top. And now look at how h of negative x, in particular this last part over here, Notice how that compares with negative h of x. Now they are the same thing. And since h of negative x does equal negative h of x, that is our definition for an odd function. And we will call it odd. Go ahead and check that. Compare that graphically, and your graphing calculator should look something like this, and confirm, yes, that's symmetric about the origin. This is an odd function. There it is. If there's anything in there that uh, didn't make sense, please come to office hours or get help from somebody who, who's getting this stuff.